we talking about today? Hello everybody, welcome to another What Are We Talking About review. Today we're talking about the book Replay by Ken Grimwood. Uh, it was first published back in 1986 and uh, I picked it up about a week ago uh, on the Audible Daily Deals. It's a great place to find some good books. I don't get them every day, but every once in a while you find a really good one. I got uh, Ubik by... Um, uh, I'm blanking on the name. He's the guy who made like... Uh, we can recall it for you, or whatever, we can remember it for you for Wholesale, the book that Total Recall was based off of. I believe he also did Do Androids Dream of... Philip K. Dick. Uh, so yeah, I got Ubik by Philip K. Dick off of there. Uh, and this one, Replay by Ken Grimwood as well. And, you know, sometimes you can get really good books for quite cheap. This was like $2. So absolutely worth it. And uh, so for those who are unfamiliar with the story, it's... A bit of a time travel story where a, a man is kind of in a crappy place in his life. He's not super happy where his life is gone. And all of a sudden he like answers the phone. His wife says, we need, and he die. He has a heart attack and dies after those two words. Like that's the last two words he ever hears. And so you hear in his mind and he's like, what do we need? Do we need milk? We need to talk? Like who knows what she was about to say. Um, and then all of a sudden he wakes up and he's in his college dorm room, uh, at age 20 or, or so. I believe it's, it's 25 years previous. So I believe he was about 45 when he died and he was 20 when he woke back up or around there. And then he, it, it's a bit of like, what's going on? He's trying to figure out what's happening. Why is he in his younger body? Is, is he just dreaming? Was all of the rest of his life just a dream? Like, what's going on? It, and it takes him a while to f figure out that he's kind of reliving the past and he's able to take advantage. Similarly to um, Hot Tub Time Machine, where they go back in time and then they're able to use their knowledge of the future to benefit financially. He does that same thing. He bets on a horse race and then on a, on a World Series uh, game and he makes a lot of a lot of money and so this first time that he comes back he he basically w rules the world financially in a way but the his wife that he had in his original life he finally goes and meets her where they first met and she doesn't want to have anything to do with him because he's a completely different person he's not the radio dj that he was the first time he's not really that hum well even if he is humble and the same guy out from an outside perspective he's not he's got a fortune 500 company at age 25 something's weird there and that's just not who she wanted to be with so he lost that aspect of his life and so that's the thing each time he goes back and replays because that it keeps happening and each time he he kind of focuses on a different thing the second time he comes back he focuses more on love he finds a different woman and they end up having a kid the the woman that he was dating in college, he ends up staying with. She becomes his college sweetheart. They get married, have a daughter. He love like he loves his daughter so much. But then again, he dies at age 45, same way, heart attack. And when he wakes up, he's completely distraught because not only is his daughter dead, she doesn't even exist, never probably will again. And he has all this these feelings uh, for her and he, he can't do anything with it. And it, it would be very frustrating. And, and then eventually he finds there's something that happens. A new movie comes out called Star Sea. And he, it's not a movie that's ever been made before. It's directed by Steven Spielberg, produced by George Lucas. This is something that is not a part of history. And he realizes that. And it makes him realize he's not the only person replaying. And so he finds the person who made this movie uh, and she, he, like he ends up convincing her that he is also a replayer, but she's freaked out right away because she thought she was the only one. Didn't even think of a possibility that another guy would be able to do what she's doing. And so it freaks her out and then she, they kind of get in a fight and they go their separate ways. But then way later she comes back and finds him and she's like, you were right. 
about what you were saying and what I was doing wasn't going to work. She tried basically using movies to convince people that they were in this sort of loop. Uh, and like then in another life, they find some another replayer who is this psychopath that keeps getting like he just keeps murdering people over and over again every time that he comes back. And then to him, he thinks that it's aliens control or telling them what to do. And like this whole replay scenario is basically alien television and they're trying to appease their alien overlords. Uh, but the interesting thing about this book, like it's, it's, it's really cool. And all these going back in time and seeing the different lives that you could have lived and all that sort of a thing. And it kind of has the, uh, presents the idea that if you could go back, do you really want to change things? Like what, at what point is the time to change the past? Like, because each time they replay, it starts later. So the first time he goes back, he's in his college dorm. The next time he comes back, he's it's like the next night. And then the time after that, it's like a week later. And then the, the gap gets more and more until finally when they die, they wake up and it's only about a week until they die again. And then they die and they wake up and it's only about a minute until they die again. And then they die and wake up and now it's a second. And then it's just millisecond. And then they're just dying and living over and over and over and over again until it just stops and they're back at the beginning before they started to replay that he didn't have the heart attack he's sitting at his desk and his wife says we need to talk and they he can like it's it's an absolutely incredible look at the possibilities of your life and what you could do with your life and what truly will make you happy because the times that he was happiest wasn't when he was super rich it was when he had found love and that's kind of a intriguing thing uh Really, you don't know what was causing it. We don't know if the guy that was crazy, if he was crazy. Maybe he was right. Maybe it wasn't al these aliens controlling things. I don't know, but it, it was definitely a real experience because after they come back and they're still alive, they find each other just so that they can know that it's real. Uh, and it's, it's a really cool story that is incredibly interesting and it's a really cool take on the whole time travel thing. It's not a true time travel story. You don't really know what was real. Maybe that whole experience they had, they had some sort of a shared mental experience, but it could have all been a dream. We don't really know, but it definitely changed who they are and it, it made them appreciate life more because the most important thing that this book sh talks about is the idea that currently, Every single human being does this. They say, I want to reach this dream, but don't worry, I've got time. And they have that same problem because they knew, oh, we'll just replay, we'll come back. We can do it next, next replay, it'll be fine. But then eventually you have done all your replays and now there's nothing and now you're dead and now you, you have so many regrets. And the thing that this book, I think personally that I took away from it that I think it's trying to present is the idea that you might not have tomorrow. So try and do what you want to do today. Because in the end, you don't want to be die an old man full of regret. You want, or an old woman full of regret. You want to have lived. You want to know on your deathbed that if you die tomorrow, you don't want to die knowing that you did not do what you wanted to do. So the important thing in life is you know, follow your heart, follow your dreams and make sure that you do what you want to do. Don't put it off until tomorrow because there might not be a tomorrow. And I know that's a little bit dark and gruesome, but it's true. And if you think about it in a positive way, you could just get so much more done and live so much more of a fulfilling life by just taking charge and doing what it's don't, don't procrastinate. That's kind of the, the, the theme of the book. Don't procrastinate. Do what you think you need to do because you never know if this is your last replay. But overall, I'm going to score this book. You know, I'm going to give it a solid 9.6 out of 10. It's fantastic. I was completely intrigued the whole time listening to this book. Like, I just listened to it pretty much from start to finish because it was so interesting. And the... The, it was incredibly well written and there's lots of good pop culture references that keep you intrigued and just the story itself 
was awesome. And right when you think you have it figured out, there's another thing that gets thrown in there and you're like, oh, maybe I was wrong or maybe I was right. So it, it's really, really fun to listen to and uh, I highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet. But if you have read it, I'd love to know what are your guys' thoughts on Replay? Uh, what do you think the author was trying to, what, what was the message that he was trying to tell you, tell us with this book? And if you haven't read it, did I convince you? Are you going to read it? Let me know in the comments section down below. And until next time, never stop reading. Peace. When do they discuss all the latest movies? Or when something big happens in the news? See, that's us. What are we talking about?